The topic is automation and what yep. tools we're going to use, but let me introduce myself. My name is Mel Delgado. I'm a developer advocate at Cisco. And I'm Denise Kwan, also a developer advocate at Cisco. All right, so fire away. You had that question mm -hmm. about what tools yeah. uh, folks in, in or, operations, no, right? Or how, the tools? Or how? how? Okay. How, you know, we've been talking about automation. Okay. If you're new to automation, you're like, where do I get started? Does, uh, does automating mean you need to learn a programming language? Ooh. Or are there tools to help you out? Ah, okay, so do you need to learn, uh, let's start there. Do you need to learn a programming language? And so I'll start there. So programming language in general, just I'll, I'll give you my take on it. Programming language in general, it could be like the Pythons, you know, C, C++, Go, uh, there are lots of yeah. uh, languages out there. Uh, I think number one most popular was uh, in the, I, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, is Tiobe Index, T-I-O-B-E. It's a company based here in, Nether in the Netherlands, and that company studies things, or their products basically go around uh, software quality and so forth. So they rank uh, the popularity of software, uh, or software languages, basically uh, languages, programming yeah. languages. Number one was Python. Number 12 was Go, uh, so it's, it's increasing in popularity. I think number two is C, C++, Java. You just start going down the list, you can look it up online. But do you need to learn that? And so my answer would be yes you do, but you don't necessarily need to be a quasi-expert. So in other words, you might look at it as this big, big mountain to climb and almost like this insurmountable thing. You, okay, I, you know, for example, if you're configuring things and you do a lot of tasks manually, Suddenly someone says, hey, you're going to automate this. And the first thing that comes to mind is, I, I got to go learn a whole programming language? Like, forget about it. I feel like it's like a whole other career that I don't have. But I, I would argue that you, you would need to learn it, but I don't think that you need to be an absolute expert at it. You could probably just, in, in one week's time, you could probably be proficient enough to pull some things off with, you know, for, for automating. The other thing I would say is that Sometimes you don't need to necessarily have the programming language all the time. You could use a configuration management tool using tools such as Python, Go to automate things. But you can also use configuration management uh, tools, which is what we've been seeing here today at Cisco Live quite a bit. There are quite a few sessions mm -hmm. on tools like Terraform and Ansible. But if we look at like Ansible, Ansible is written in Python, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Terraform was written in Go. So I brought those up in my talk because I was thinking about, you know, those tools were written for a reason in those programming languages. Now, while Ansible, arguably, Ansible and Terraform perhaps aren't like, in the strictest sense, a programming language, it is a language nonetheless. Uh, so you could use that to start automating something really simple, really small, perhaps unimpactful type of change mm -hmm. that, um, just to it's, get your yeah, it's hands it's it's dirty. meaningful. Yeah. It's meaningful, but it's unimpactful. Mm -hmm. So you could do things like message of the day on a switch, um, the host name for just you know you, you fire up some virtual machines or something. It's just the the important piece is that you're automating it, and you don't necessarily need to do uh, to use Python or Go as programming languages to perform those actions. You could, and it's it's a little more challenging than the configuration management tools, but you don't necessarily strictly have to take that approach. I think that it really depends, though, of your role, right? That comes from a dev, or, or from an ops perspective. I mean, devs, a lot of our automation is really, I mean, we do do the whole CI, CD pipeline and do use tools like Jenkins, but like, you know, we have to write test cases that we automate. And that obviously has to be written in some programming language. Like, when I was on one of the products, I had to use, uh, use Tickle scripts. Tickle. to do load testing. Tickle and, TK. Yeah, and it, it was not fun, but you, you know, yeah. it really depends what you're trying to automate. But if you are just getting your hand, like starting off, um, if it can be done with a tool, it probably is the easier way so that you don't get frustrated. I think that a lot of these things is, you know, you want to do it as simple as possible because if it's difficult, you're gonna get turned off by it and just like not do it at all. But what we found when we automate is like you start like really, oh my God, I, I did this. And then you wanna do more and more. So it's almost, I don't know, almost like an addiction. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, you know what, I, I, I call it like a bug. Once you catch that automation bug and, and you, <laughs> you get that rush that first time where you're like, oh my gosh, 
I just did this with a few lines of code. Then that, what else can I do? What else, exactly. And then it's, it's like a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. So if you start small, that snowball is going to keep getting bigger and bigger when you're like, ah, oh, look, I can automate this next thing. And your confidence starts to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, yeah, yeah. And then, and again, back to programming languages. Um, if you're going to automate in Python, I think you're, one of the things you're going to get is, or like a, a programming language like Python, is you're going to get something that's very specific and tailored to exactly what you want. You're going to have yeah. like everything else like as part of your code. So, uh, or you know, if you're using a configuration management tool, for example, when you compare the two, you're going to have something that's very performant and it's going to do exactly what it is you want to do, and you're going to have full control over that. Downside is that I think in some, in many ways, when you're doing it programmatically, you have to write things that are already built into configuration management tools. Things like being item potent, for example. Um, perhaps like uh, logging in like over SSH, like in other words, you're trying to connect, you're trying to create some kind of session with a device or server or what have you. You're going to have to write that code over and over again, potentially, or you're going to have to develop that in a way that makes sense and is something that scales well and so forth. So, okay, you could do it and you could write it, and it's probably something simple for some. But for folks that are just getting started or even at an intermediate level, it's, it's just a lot to do when out of the box you already have a configuration management tool that does those things for you. That doesn't mean that that's a preference or it's strictly like you should do it this way versus another way. It's just saying that out of the box you're going to find a lot of things that you're going to have to code on your own anyway. So it's just almost like this, this incentive to maybe use the configuration management tools over a programming language. Yeah. I think it's a matter of personal choice or professional also, choice, I you say. know. Is, is it a mountain, right? If you use a configuration tool, it might just be a hill. Uh, versus using, yeah. if you don't know the coding language itself, you gotta learn that first. Yeah. And that by itself can be daunting, especially if you don't have any um, background of doing Python yeah. or, although Python is not, at, well, I'm a dev, so I can't really say, but not super difficult to learn. I teach Python, so. Yeah, you're a teacher. Um, you, te you taught the advanced class. I did teach the advanced class this time. Um, I typically teach the intro class, but I got upgraded. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. So good, good. Yeah. So, all right, so I think we've covered the topic of programming language versus configuration management, the mountain versus the, the, hill, the hill maybe that you'd have to climb. <laughs> so, final thoughts for you? You know, if you are getting started in doing automation, you don't know where to start, ask us. We will be happy to help you with your journey and tell you what you should do because it really depends on your use case. Each use case is different and we try to generalize it just because we don't know what their use cases are. But, you know, automation is the way to go. We are all heading towards that direction. Um, it's not a bad thing. It's, it's really not, and um, if you want to learn Python, let me know in the comments and maybe we can go through some of that stuff in oh, yeah. our show. Well, imagine that, a daily stand-up and we just cover Daily stand-up where Denise topics. talks about Python. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for joining us in this episode. Uh, hope that you can join us for some episodes in the future and that you've caught some of ours in the past where we address this very important topic about mm -hmm. automation and some of the things that you could do to get started. I'm Mel Delgado, developer advocate at Cisco, and this is The Daily Standup. And I'm Denise Kwan. Thanks for joining. Mm -hmm.